Hi, this is Lisa Futch with creativecanines.blogspot.com for Paper Maniac. And this is your July Copic Lessons for the Copic Club. And this is the new Whiff of Joy stamp. It's brand new called Business Willow. As you can tell, Willow has grown up a little bit and Patty has these in our store right now. In fact, I, she's one of the first people that I've seen who have had it. Um, I don't know how you feel about Whiff of Joy, but I get giddy with excitement every time that there's a new release. I know my mom loves them. I love them. There's an adorable graduation willow and all kinds of cool things. And Ian <laughs> looks so cute too. Anyway, what we're going to focus on today is before we talked about side light sources, using our template, looking at the light source from the side. A lot of times stamps are done um, from up top and I think that that's fine. However, I prefer a side light source because I think it gives a little bit more interest. And what suggests to me that this is a side light source is by the look of Willow's head here. She's facing towards my right. So what I'm going to do is let's start out by coloring her and I'm going to be fairly, um, fairly consistent with the colors that they present her in. Um, I'm thinking that we go with our colors this month. We use an E57, E53, paired up with an E51 and an E50 to make a kind of khaki pant. And let's, let's work on that and let's look at where our light source will be. Once again, Light source is coming to the side, so everything that where this line enters is lightest. Everything where the line leaves is the darkest. So, to me, I know for certain that here in the crease is going to be one of the darker areas. So I'm just going to lay that in. And once again, we're using E57. E53, E51, and E50. I'm also going to lay a little bit of this color in up underneath her jacket here because there's going to be a little bit of a shadow. And also farthest away from the light source where the light source is leaving. So I'm going to add just a little bit there. Now I'm going to go in with my second darkest color, which is an E53, and I'm going to add that in. Now these colors are a more difficult blend because uh, they are a little bit farther apart. I find E53 is a difficult blend with most colors with the exception of the E50 and the E51. It can, it can be a little bit difficult. And I'll show you how to blend that in better. And you can see it's pretty blotchy right now. I'm blending into it with my modified feather strip, but it's still a little bit blotchy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my E57, and I'm going to take the E53 and use just the tip of that marker to pull some of that color off. And I'm going to go back over that to blend those two colors together. And there you start to see the blend happening. And I use my E53, E50, E51 combination all the time. It's one of my go-to color family groups. It's great for all different kinds of things. I'm trying to get the look of as kind of a camel, camel, camel looking um, skirt here. Okay, and you can tell as you go farther away after that E55, or the E57 comes off of your marker, it's getting lighter. So it actually looks like we have three different colors down right now when we don't. And I'm just going to go in and be patient. I'm going to blend those colors in together. Blending is a process. There you go, I'm liking that better. Now I'm going to go back in with my E53 
and blend into that E53. Now, if we notice, there's too big of a jump between the two of them because there is a little bit of a, a color difference there because of that E57. That's okay. Once again, I can go back in, pull back up my E53, and use a tip to tip coloring method, and add a little bit of that in order to help blend. You could also blend on the page, but for me, these Whiff of Joy stamps tend to be a little small. So I will do that, but I didn't want to go out of the lines too much. And you know what? I'm not going to use the E50. I think we get enough color difference just with the E51. Now, if I say to myself, well, I may have colored a little bit too darkly. I don't like the way that is. It needs to be a little bit lighter. I can go ahead and use my colorless blender not only to fix the areas where I went out, but I can use it as to lighten and to add a little bit more highlight in her skirt. Okay. Now, I'm going to use our colors this month again. Uh, I really like some of the blue violets are some of my very favorites. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the blue violet 17, the blue violet 13, and the blue violet 02. And put these colors together for her jacket. Now, and you can tell, and I can tell here too, as the color starts to dry, you can see where the color has bled out. And because there's a lot of solvent in the B51 and B53, you may have a little bleeding outside the lines, that's okay. So, now BV17, people are gonna be a little nervous about it. I know people don't like the dark colors, they make them a little edgy, it's okay. Once again, we're gonna look at the side profile, everything here is lightest, everything here is darkest, and I'm gonna start with a smaller chunk. I'm gonna start here with my, just my sleeve. I'm going to go in with my BV13 now, the modified feather stroke, and the BVs tend to blend so nicely together. I really like using them. And go back in with the BV02. Now I'm going to blend in, but I'm going to reserve that white area, and the reason why is that if I go over it very lightly, then I have kept my space, my white spot, and I've kept in a highlight. Go back in and fix this. And pretty much you can fix any color with the exception of reds. And reds you can fix a little. <laughs> so now we've got the arm done. Very satisfied with the arm. I'm going to go ahead and go into the other arm. And once again, let's look at our template. And everything coming in was going to be lightest. Everything leaving is going to be the darkest. So once again on this area, the side of the arm, we're going to have a darker color. Now with the modified feather stroke, I can use very little strokes as opposed to the um, circular stroke method, which I end up out of the line. Now I'm going to change my rule here a little bit. The light does enter here, but there is a, a fold there, a crease in her jacket, so we need to take that into consideration. I'm going to go on my BV13. And the way that you know that you're ready to move on to the next color with the feather stroke is if you're blending in, all of a sudden you'll see that line disappear. And I don't know if you can see it on, on video or not, but that line just all of a sudden disappears and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, it's ready to blend in. All right, and with my BBO2. And with your BBs, you'll notice there's more of a purple color and then there's more of the, the gray color BBs. And I, if you, as long as you keep those ones together, you're fine. That's why I picked BB02 as a...